that you? The folks at Zoic were just as proud of a more subtle effect when Captain Brass appeared to be sipping with a forked tongue. Hmm? You know, you have to like hold a glass very still, and it got very technical for a while. I usually I, I like to work out of emotions and out of my whole authentic being, but that particular time I just had to hold a glass very still, and then they put in it in later. Well, it was either that or the tongue transplant, which you know. Yeah, I know that's really. I should probably go. I don't know if I'm going to go that far with my contract with CBS. <laughs> the tongue transplant. Captain, I'll need a copy of the police report. For the cast, no, part of the fun of tonight's episode was shooting at Universal Studios' historic Western Town back lot. It's the magic of Hollywood. I mean, you just come here and you feel like, wow, I want to, I want to get in the movies. I want to be in a Western. I yes, want to be yeah, an actor. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yippee T I O. Hold out your hands, please. Turn them over. The car wasn't the only thing with very so, realistic uh, burns. The suspect himself had blisters on his hands and back. Where do you work? At the feedlot off Highway 111. It looks so real and blistery. How did they do that? Uh, they really burned him. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you guys are mean here at <laughs> CSI. No, um, well, you know, it's it's a, exactly. It's a, um, well, it's a, the way they do it is they take jello. Um, what flavor? I don't know. Cherry would be my preference. But they take jello, actually, and they make jello, you know, and then they put it in a microwave after it forms, and then they reduce it again to, so it becomes soft, like soft little, and then they take those microwave jelly jellos, little, and place them strategically on the man's back. So it's really jello. I never want to eat jello again after but that don't story. Don't eat jello <laughs> off anyone's back, unless, you know, that's your thing. Last night's episode of CSI ended with a startling cliffhanger. Captain Jim Brass is facing his own life or death struggle after being shot by a suspect at close range. Finding out your character might die is not the best news an actor can get, even an actor as seasoned as Paul Guilfoyle. Either I walk out of here right now or she dies. Nobody's going to die, Willie. Not you, not her, not me, not Sammy, not anyone. You sure about that? Oh, yeah. A very brave Jim Brass negotiated with an armed suspect on last night's CSI. But the standoff ended with Brass in the line of fire. So now we know you've been shot. Hmm. Your life hangs in the balance. That's right. When did you, as an actor, find out your life is going to hang in the balance. Well, you know, I, I tend to read the scripts um, uh, as soon as they come out. And they didn't give you a call first. Well, you know what, they, 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 they did. I got a call from the producer, but I, I being the kind of guy, I, I read the scripts very quickly. I like to find out what's going on just to see what's uh, happening. And um, so I had read the scripts, but I got a very good call from the producer saying, we want you to know that, you know, you're going to, you're going to be shot. But before you got that call, you had already read the script. Did you call your agent and say, what is this? No, because I'm not that kind of guy. I don't really live in that sort of fear, Julie. I mean, I, I've been an actor for so long. I've had about 100 jobs. So I, I have, you know, all confidence that I'd get another job if this one ended. This isn't the first time that Paul Guilfoyle has played a man who's been shot. He says each time the character's reaction was the same. You really can't believe it that that somebody shot you and that it's happening to you that you're because there's a certain I, I guess the word that most people say when they're shot isn't mom or or uh, or Julie or it, it's it's um no. He's lying. Hey you got the gun. I'm not I wouldn't lie to you. If this really is the end of Jim Brass, Paul Guilfoyle says the character might have no one to blame but himself. I think the good thing about the character that I like about him is that he operates from a place of kind of honesty, of authenticity and honesty. He sometimes thinks other people do the same thing. A few times he's wrong, like all of us. The co-star Paul Guilfoyle told us it took an emotional toll on his character, Captain Jim Brass. <laughs> Fire. There's a lot of chasing the bad guys and stunts and a lot of the stuff you see in a feature film, really, that we worked on. Worked very hard and got lucky, really, to be able to get the production value out of it. It looks great. I 
think what is kind of interesting to me about this is that it has to be a, a kind of uh, an accountability on the part of the police. Guys, uh, hang tight. I'm going to get uh, some rides to take you down to the station, okay? I want to get your statements. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. The challenge for me particularly was to, uh, you know, people you work with maybe, you know, lost their lives in, in, a, in their job. The next thing I remember is Bill. While you're describing them, trying to be, you know, scientific and precise, oftentimes you'll find an emotional unraveling that combines with it, and that's the kind of was the kind of double uh, event that was going on. Certainly from my character, he was he was just a kid.